Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and today I'm doing a PUBG FPS test between the Exynos 2100 and the Snapdragon 888. So you can see here we're starting off with smooth and extreme. Nothing else is turned on at all. And similar to my Genshin Impact video, I'm going to be following the same path around the training ground just to see how these two phones compare. I will just point out I actually do have power saving mode turned on on the Exynos version here. So we're going to see if that has any effect at all. To be fair, PUBG runs really well even with it off, so we probably won't see too much of a difference. Again, we have the temperature guide on the right hand side of the app icon. The Snapdragon is a bit warmer because I took this video last, the smooth and extreme settings, but as you can see, it's not phased in the slightest anyway. So what we're hoping to see on the Exynos is basically what the Snapdragon is showing, where it's almost locked at 60 FPS. So my route here is just to pick up some items and then go down the hill, check out the boats. Because they're normally destroyed, I decided I wouldn't bother trying to get on a jet ski or anything each time. I would just run past. But my goal here was to get in the hot air balloon. So you can see as I turn over to the left here, the bridge jumping into view some of the items in game do seem to do that quite often. So the next part of my route was just to run around this little island, get into the hot air balloon, fly up into the air and then just jump down. So hopefully that gives the phones a chance to sort of show their ability for long distance drawing and obviously different effects so we've got the fire effect in the hot air balloon And then just to pop down to this pier here and turn around and that is the end of the loop. What I thought I'd also do is add my finger at the end just to sort of show you how fast the camera is moving with a proper finger rather than just me using a gamepad. And you can see it is lovely and smooth on both phones. Okay, so let's take a look at the frame rate chart. Although the scales are slightly different here, you can see quite clearly the Snapdragon is almost a straight line across the whole of the 60 FPS. The Exynos, a bit less straight, but more or less 60. An average of 59, so it isn't too bad. But you can see the difference here. Even with power save mode turned on, the Exynos is still behind GPU-wise in these settings. So now let's take a look at the CPU. So in PUBG, the Exynos is more utilized than the Snapdragon. So it's working harder than the Exynos is, but sadly isn't actually producing as good as results.
Okay, so we're now going to move on to HDR and Ultra on the Exynos and HDR and Extreme on the Snapdragon. So HDR and Ultra is the highest you can set on the Exynos, whereas the Snapdragon lets you go all the way to Extreme, even in this setting. So you can see here straight away, the Exynos is now restricted to 40 FPS, whereas the Snapdragon is still capable of 60 FPS. So that's really showing the power difference between the Adreno and the Mali GPUs. So the Exynos is dropping a frame or two. The Snapdragon, however, is quite happy sitting at 59.60 most of the time. The sound is mixed between these two phones, so you'll hear music from both and sound effects. It hasn't sounded too bad whilst recording this voiceover, so I will leave them both on. So yeah, it looks like the Exynos is pretty much locked at 40. It's certainly average FPS so far. Every now and again you do get a frame drop. But obviously the Snapdragon is pushing 60 frames per second without any issues at all. I had forgotten to set up the button to ascend, so that was me just adding that in on the Snapdragon. So you see here when at a long distance and rotated the camera, the Exynos dropped a couple more frames that time. But overall it's, uh, it hasn't done too badly. We know that it's got the weaker GPU so it's kind of to be expected. Okay, so let's have a look at the frame rate charts here. Like I said, Exynos pretty much locked at 40. It did drop a couple of frames every now and again, and that is the maximum setting you can have it at. But the Snapdragon, absolutely fine still at 60. You can see a frame dropping every now and again there, but to be honest, nothing you'd really notice during gameplay. CPU usage wise, you can see the Snapdragon looks a lot smoother than the Exynos. Again, I've seen this before, in the Genshin Impact video, the Exynos seems a bit more up and down compared to the Snapdragon. Okay, last up I'm going to look at the Ultra HD and Ultra frame rate on the Snapdragon just for fun. We'll just see how well it can do here. So you can see it's been locked to 40, but interestingly the load has actually dropped even on these high settings. It'll be interesting to see if it goes up a bit when we get closer to the water.
So you can see here the water reflections, they're looking quite nice on the Snapdragon here. We'll get a closer look at them in a minute. You still see things popping in as you run around the map. Trees and the bridge there. And of course the wind turbine at the back. Okay, one final lap of this little island. You can see the FPS chart here, it's basically flat. Why do you say that? It's just lost one frame, but it's pretty much 40 locked. Okay, I've just jumped forward here a bit because someone was using the hot air balloon. So I thought I'd go and take a bit of a look at the water reflections here. You can see the water looks really nice. Lovely reflections there from the sun. It's still pretty smooth. Just the odd frame dropping every now and again. Okay, here's the balloon. Let's go for it. Okay, so let's take a look at the frame rate and CPU chart. You can see Snapdragon wasn't really phased at all by the Ultra HD settings here. CPU wise, what was it? It was averaging around 10%. So it was basically sat there idling pretty much and it was still able to power through with those beautiful graphics and yeah, really impressive stuff from the Snapdragon here. So there we are. Even with power saver mode enabled, the Exos isn't able to really compete with the Snapdragon in this case. It didn't do bad, but the Snapdragon is still ahead with its Adreno 660 compared to the Mali G78. I hope you enjoyed the video, click the like button if you did. I've recorded some more games which I'm going to be putting up over the next few days, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to become a member of the channel, click on the join button, and that really helps out. And thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.